Assalamu alaikum. We have uh, talked about basics uh, of uh, DC machines and now uh, we are in position to talk about real DC machines. So in today's lecture we shall talk about construction of uh, rotor of a real DC machine. Uh, the rotor or uh, armature of a real DC machine that is uh, uh, generally laminated. This lamination is to achieve uh, or to minimize the eddy current losses. On the rotor we have uh, several slots curved over here and in each slot we place uh, coils and uh, we do not have a single turn coil rather we have uh, multiple turns of the coil. This uh, rotor coil is uh, generally uh, diamond shaped and uh, there are multiple turns in the coil and uh, we have multiple turns of, uh, in each coil and we uh, are getting uh, two wires of, out of this coil. Each turn of the wire is electrically insulated. So the total number of uh, conductors in the rotor, total number of conductors in the load rotor is given by this expression. Z is total number of conductors that is equal to 2 multiplied by the uh, number of coils multiplied by number of turns on each coil. So total number of conductors in the rotor that is number of coils multiplied by number of turns in each coil multiplied by 2 that is we have two sides of each coil. So these coils are placed on the slots curved on the uh, rotor and the placement is like this one. Uh, on the rotor if one side of the coil is placed on the outer surface the other side is placed at the inner surface and uh, uh, for another coil uh, for another coil if one side is placed over here the other side will be placed on the inner side of the rotor this will increase the mechanical uh, strength uh, of the coil that is uh, this coil will not come out of the rotor due to rotation of the rotor furthermore uh, if one end of the coil is placed under the north pole the other end uh, should be under the south pole. That is for case of two poles machine. One side of the coil is under north pole. The other side is uh, under the south pole. That is there is an angle of 180 degrees. So why do we place two sides of the coil under different pole faces? Why not both the ends of the coil over here? The reason is that if both the coils, both the ends of the coils are under the same pole, the polarity of induced voltage will in these conductors will be such that the net voltage that will be available over here will be zero. That is uh, like this one. If we have single turn of coil and in both the cases, if for example, this rotor is rotating in this direction then polarity of the induced voltage will be this one that is coming out of the board uh, this one this one so both the voltages will be uh, not supporting each other whether these will be opposing each other and net voltage that will be available over here will be zero that is why if one end of the coil is under north pole the other end must be under south pole so that if voltage in one side of the conductor is in this direction the uh, polarity of the voltage in other side of this coil is this one and both the voltages will add up to get 2 E volt volts over here. Uh, similarly if uh, we have uh, for example 4 pole machine with north pole and then south pole will be here and another north pole and south pole. If we have four pole machine and if one end of coil is placed over here, the second end will be placed over here because if both the ends are under the north pole, then again we shall not get any voltage out of this coil. So if one end is placed over here, the second end will be placed over here. That is uh, the mechanical angle between the coils is 90 degrees. Uh, however, as far as magnetic uh, effects are concerned, 
it is the same one uh, end is under north pole and the other end is under south pole this situation is uh, similar for the case of two pole machine so as far as magnetic effects are concerned for this coil this situation and this situation is the same so we say that mechanical angle in this case is 90 degrees however the magnetic angle uh, in the book uh, he used uh, the electrical angle theta e that is uh, 180 degrees in this case the same situation like this one one end of the coil under north pole the other end under the south pole the same is situation over here one end is under north pole the other end is under south pole so in general the electrical angle or magnetic angle that is uh, related with uh, the mechanical angle by this relation number of poles in the machine divided by 2 multiplied by the mechanical angle so here we have uh, mechanical angle of 90 degrees we have 4 pole machine divided by 2 so theta electrical angle is 180 degrees so normally this is the situation that is uh, the coils two sides of the coil uh, they are placed at 180 electrical degrees and we define coil span coil span is the angle between two sides of the same coil uh, that is uh, in this case we have coil span of 180 degrees and also for the four pole machine that we have just considered uh, where one side of the coil was placed over here other side was placed over here the electrical angle here we have north pole south pole the electrical angle is again 180 degrees uh, this is not uh, uh, always the case we may have slightly uh, higher degree or slightly lower degree so we define the coil span as the angle between two sides of the coil if that angle is 180 degree we call it full pitch coil and if the coil is slightly uh, more than 180 or slightly less than 180 degrees then we call it fractional pitch coil in the last lecture we talked about a wave wound uh, DC machine you remember there were nine coils in the rotor that is uh, the nine coils and four pole machines uh, was discussed over here that is uh, what was mechanical angle between two sides of the coil uh, here and here were two sides uh, this angle was uh, total angle is 360 degrees and there were nine coils so 40 degrees uh, that is uh, there were 40 degrees of distance between first coil uh, first uh, coil and the second coil and these are two sides of the same coil and this angle was 80 degrees mechanical and what about electrical degrees so electrical degrees in this machine was 160 degrees so this is not uh, th this machine was not a full pitch machine rather it was a fractional pitch machine uh, next comes uh, the connection of the coils to commutator there are multiple ways to connect uh, uh, the coils to commutator segments two most popular are the lap winding and the wave winding in last two lectures we have talked about these two types of windings in more details and we have also talked about pros and cons of both both uh, types of windings in case of lap winding uh, we know that commutator pitch commutator pitch was uh, either plus one or it was minus one that is two sides of the same coil were commutated to adjacent commutator segments that is this was the situation uh, we have two sides of the same coil and one side was connected to commutator segment A the other side was connected to commutator segment B for the case of lap wound DC machines and the distance between the uh, uh, two commutator segments to which the two ends of the coil is connected that was called the commutator pitch this commutator pitch can be either plus one or minus one that is 
it can be either this situation or this can also be this situation. So again, we have the same coil. Two ends of the coil are connected to adjacent commutator segments. Uh, this is also left wound, uh, wound DC machine. What is difference between this machine and this machine? Uh, that is machine with this kind of com connection to commutator segments and machine with this kind of connection to commutator segments. The only difference will be the direction of rotation of that machine. That is, if this machine a uh, machine with this kind of connection rotates in clockwise direction this machine will rotate in counterclockwise direction uh, so in this case uh, the commutator pitch is plus one in this case the commutator pitch is minus one this winding is called progressive winding and this winding is retrogressive winding the only difference between progressive winding and retrogressive winding uh, is the direction of rotation otherwise uh, all the properties are the same another variation in the construction of a rotor is either the uh, windings can be simplex winding it or it can be duplex winding and even these can be triplex winding so what is difference between simplex winding and duplex winding let's consider this machine uh, we have uh, this machine with a complete set of windings uh, with uh, all the connections the winding that is shown over here we have four coils and uh, one side of coil is connected to this commutator segment the other side of the same coil is connected to this commutator segment so this is a lab wound DC machine what will happen if we insert additional coils in this machine What we have done is we have inserted an additional uh, we have inserted additional coils in the machine and uh, another uh, commutator in the machine and now we have uh, connections for example like this one complete the connections now we have uh, one set of winding which is indicated by blue uh, lines and another set of winding which is indicated by uh, uh, black lines and we have two commutators one over here the second over here there are two independent set of windings in this machine with two different commutators there are two independent set of windings even if we remove one winding the, com the, the machine is complete it will be working uh, this commutator over here we have two independent commutator side two independent commutators these two independent commutators can also be made like this one here each commutator had four segments why not to make it like this one uh, commutator now has eight uh, uh, segments four segments for these uh, blue uh, coils and four segments for these black uh, coils so this situation is the same as this situation over here we had two commutator segments uh, sorry two commutators each having four segments and now these two commutators are uh, combined to make one commutator and again the connections can be shown uh, will be uh, like this one uh, so now uh, these coils with connection to commutator segments and another set of coil with connection to commutator segments like this one so this situation 
is exactly the same as this situation. Uh, we have two independent set of windings over here, two independent set of windings. Over here, we had two commutators. Over here, we have also one commutator. However, these segments are different. So this kind of winding, uh, this uh, each uh, set of winding was lap wound DC machine. This is again lap wound DC machines with two independent set of windings. Such a machine is called duplex lap wound DC machine. Similar to that, we can have even triplex uh, lap wound or wave wound DC machine with three independent set, set of windings. So these are a few variations in the construction of uh, rotor of uh, real DC machines. Uh, in the next lecture, we shall talk about some problems which are associated with commutation in uh, DC machines.